In this video, we're going to be looking at the ratio test to determine if a series converges. But before we talk about the ratio test, I need to talk about factorial and either remind you about it or tell you about it for the first time. And if you've never seen this, this exclamation point on a number before, don't worry about it. It's really not a big deal. Um, it's just not something that's come up in this class or you know, maybe in any of the other classes coming up to this point. It just depends. Certain years, some people know about it. Other years, people don't. So... N factorial, that's the exclamation point, that's just where we're going to take n and multiply it by n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way down to 3, and 2, and 1. It's definitely got a combinatorial meaning behind it, and I'll talk about that in a second. But first, as far as finding the values like 2, 3, 4, and 5 factorial, those are, those are pretty common for us. So I'm going to say, all right, that's 2 factorial is 2 times 1, and that's just 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and that's just going to give me 6. Okay, if I take 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that's also just 4 times the previous result, and that's going to be 6 times 4, which is 24. And then if I wanted to do 5 factorial, I'd do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that would end up giving me 120. Okay, now where it's a little more interesting is where we start having, like, you know, variables or something in, in the factorial. So n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. I'm just going to write out, you know, n factorial and n plus 1 factorial, or at least start them. And in factorial, it's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 3 and 2 and 1. Uh, but n plus 1 factorial is going to have a lot of the same factors, right? It's going to have n and n minus 1 and n minus 2 and all the rest of them down to 3 and 2 and 1. And so I could cancel off a bunch of these. I could cancel off the entire numerator with um, almost all of the terms of the denominator, and just all I'd be left with is that n plus 1 in the denominator, so that would be 1 over n plus 1. Now with 1 and 0 factorial, I think I'm going to have to kind of call back to the, to the combinatorial meaning of factorial. And so the idea here is it's the number of like unique arrangements of n items. And what I always say in class is like it's the number of ways I could, um, you know, line n students up at the door at the end of class. Um, and so really there's only one way that I can line up one student at the door, and that's just by putting the student at the door. And then for zero factorial, that's also going to be one, because there's only one way I can line zero students up at the door, and that's by not lining any of them up at the door. And, you know, I think that, as you'll see when we go and actually use these, on, especially moving forward in the Taylor and McLaurin series, why zero factorial equals one works really well. Um, and, but I'm sure there's other reasons for you to believe that as well, and you could just you know, search for those on your own. Now, with n plus 2 factorial over n factorial, that shouldn't need to happen all that often, um, but I might just show you what's going to happen. Yeah, and I was thinking I might, you know, kind of um, more speak more generally about that n factorial over n plus 1 factorial we did up above. So if I write out n plus 2 factorial, I can say that's, okay, n plus 2 times n plus 1, and n and the rest of them. But when I say n and the rest of them, well, that's just n factorial. So I'm just going to package that up there. And then I'm going to be dividing by n factorial. And then I'll notice, okay, I can fa I, or I, not factor, I can cancel off the n factorials. And then that'll just leave me with n plus 2 times n plus 1. All right, so now that we've discussed factorial, I can tell you about the ratio test, uh, because ratio test is something we really want to use on a series that has factorials in it. So pretty much we're confronted with a series, which is the sum from 1 to infinity of a sub n, and we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a n plus 1 to a n, and we get l as the limit. Okay, if l is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. Okay. And if L is greater than 1, then the series is going to diverge. And if L is 1, then the series, the, then the test is inconclusive, and we would have to use another test. Um, I'm not going to prove this for you in this video. If you're interested, uh, you can click up there. I've, I've proved that on video before. Um, and, but it's not terribly enlightening as to why it works or, or how we're going to use it. So I'm just going to move forward and talk about what kinds of series might ra make this ratio test inconclusive. And that would be a p-series. So for example, I'm going to talk about the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Okay, that is a p-series, and we know that that one's converging uh, because p equals 2, which is greater than 1. And that's much easier than executing the ratio test. But let me show you what would happen if I did. Okay, if I wanted to run the ratio test, I would be interested in considering the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. Okay, so kind of like say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for that. And then that's going to equal, well, 
set up a limit of an absolute value. A n plus one, wherever I see n in the general term, that one over n squared, it's that n that's getting squared, I replace it with an n plus one. So that's going to be one over n plus one squared. And then I'm gonna divide by a n. Uh, the terms of a n, but you know me, I don't like dividing layers of fractions, so I'm just going to flip and multiply. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over n squared, so that would be n squared over 1. And then I might start to, you know, clean up this limit here. Okay, so I'm going to say, oh, that's a little outside of your field of view. Um, that's going to be the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over n plus 1 squared. Yeah, I lost the absolute values, but it's not going to be any less true because it wasn't alternating or anything, and these are definitely positive quantities. And then if I think about that, that limit is definitely going to be 1. And if L is 1, then the test is inconclusive. Okay, but, um, you know, I might could extend this beyond just P-series to other series that are, you know, we think about are like the P-series that we would use limit comparison against a P-series for, uh, the ones that are kind of like polynomial on top, polynomial on bottom. Um, and these aren't the only types of series that make the ratio test inconclusive, but they're definitely the most common ones that we run into in AP calculus that make the ratio test inconclusive. All right, now we'll do a couple examples where we're just going to look at a series and determine whether it converges or diverges using the ratio test. Um, and these are both good because they got factorial in them. Um, and I think what I'd say my general advice is ratio test is really good for anything that's got like a mix of types in it. Um, you know, like factorial and, you know, a geometric aspect like that 5 to the n. Um, P series and factorial, something like that. Um, if you got a mix, you're probably going to want to go with the, with the ratio test. All right, so with A, we are interested in running the ratio test on this thing. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm doing the ratio test, and that's going to involve me considering the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a n plus 1 to a n. All right, so term n plus 1. That's going to be where I plug in n plus 1 wherever I see n in the original formula. So I'm going to have n plus 1 factorial and a 5 to the n plus 1. And then I'm going to divide that by the terms of the original. Or it's just going to be like multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiplying by 5 to the n over n factorial. And, and I think to look at this and make it a little easier on myself, I might, you know, change the order in which I'm multiplying these things. I might say, all right, well, this is just, you know, put the factorials together. This is n plus 1 factorial over n factorial multiplied by 5 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1. I think that'll help us. Then, off to the side, I'm going to start thinking about, you know, how to simplify these things, because that's something that you're going to want to do pretty fast, you know, as you keep moving forward with this stuff. But at first, it's it's always a question of like the of the algebra through here so m plus one factorial over n factorial this is very similar to one i did just earlier um but i'm going to think about what these are and if you're ever unsure you're just going to write out the you know actual factors m plus one factorial and n factorial and it'll give me m plus one times n times n minus one and n minus two and so on divided by n times n minus one and minus two and so on Okay, so then you can see which of these we can factor off and which we'll be left with. And so that'll be n plus 1 in the numerator. Okay, with the 5 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1, I'm going to, you know, apply the exponent property and say, all right, 5 to the n plus 1 is like 5 to the n multiplied by another 5. Okay, 5 to the n times 5 to the 1, and I could cancel off the 5 to the n's, and that's going to be 1 fifth. So if I'm, you know, back to the limits in red, if I'm simplifying this, this is going to end up being the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 divided by 5. And as n approaches infinity, so does that fraction, and the absolute value of the fraction is going to approach infinity, and so that limit is going infinity. Um, and since the limit came back greater than 1, we know that the series diverges. And so I conclude that A diverges. All right, for B... We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to set up for the ratio test. Um, we're going to be considering the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a n plus 1 to a n. And we're going to plug in n plus 1, where we see n in the general formula for the terms of b, to start. So that'll be 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 factorial. So that'll be 2 to the n plus 1 in the numerator and an n plus 2 factorial in the denominator. We're going to divide by the terms of the original, which will be like multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll have an n plus 1 factorial in the numerator and a 2 to the n in the denominator. Okay.
kind of like before, um, I'm going to want to cancel off these. I don't think we're going to need to rearrange them. We're not going to need to write that out. 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n times n plus 1 factorial over n plus 2 factorial. I think you'll be able to, you know, start doing that a little faster. n plus 1 factorial over n plus 2 factorial, if you're unsure, you know, you know, multiply them out. Um, but n plus 2 factorial can be written as n plus 2 times n plus 1 factorial. So this should give me 1 over n plus 2. And then the 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n, again, the 2 to the n plus 1 has just got that one extra power of 2 there. So if I was to simplify that, I should get 2. And then, okay, well, that, to combine all of that together, that's going to give me the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 2 over n plus 2. And thinking about what happens with that, that fraction, the numerator stays constant, the denominator grows and grows and grows, and so that limit is going to be zero. And since that limit came back less than one, I can conclude that B converges absolutely. All right, and there you go. That's a, I think that's going to be all. I think that was a good set of examples, one of the ratio tests coming back inconclusive, one of it showing that the series diverged, and one that it showing that it converged absolutely. Um, we're going to do other things with the ratio test, specifically like find the interval of convergence uh, or radius of convergence for a power series. But we're going to do that in the next video, so that's going to be all for this one. Thanks for watching.